yes, shallow crankbait fishing is a power technique, absolutely. And um, I've kind of become known as a, as a shallow crankbait fisherman. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, why, why do you love shallow crankbait fishing? Uh, well, it, it has a lot to do with, with where I grew up. I grew up fishing uh, a lot of Virginia, North Carolina lakes, Bugs Island, Kerr Reservoir, a lot of people know it as. Uh, and that's, that's a, it's a lake, it doesn't have a whole lot of cover. It's got a lot of rock and um, it's real sparse cover. The water's a little bit stained. It's got a lot of shad in it. All those ingredients add up to good shallow crankbait fishing for, for a majority of the year. Uh, so that's one of, the, one of the things, you know, I grew up fishing on the James River, it's a tidal river, probably like some of the places around here. Not a lot of uh, vegetation when I, was, uh, when I was fishing it. So there's, you know, you got sparse, stained water, sparse cover, isolated wood, you know, current, that's, that's all shallow crankbait stuff that you're looking for. So all the, all the places I grew up fishing, shallow crankbait worked. So it seemed like, you know, I would, I would go from one place to the next and I'd always have a shallow crankbait on. Things would get kind of tough. I'd pick it up, fire it out there. Next thing I knew, I started catching a fish or two. So everywhere I went, I started catching fish on shallow crankbaits. And then once I, once I started fishing full time, I would go down to Alabama. I would go down to Florida. I'd go all these different places. And it was kind of my fallback. I knew at home I could always fall back and catch fish on a shallow crankbait. And so when I'd go to New Lakes in Florida or New Lake in Alabama or Tennessee, somewhere like that, I would ride around and look for places like I had fished back at home growing up, throw on a crankbait. I wouldn't just fire it out there in the middle of a, you know, on a random bluff, you know, in, with clear water, you know, that it has to fit what you're looking for. And we'll go, we'll get into that in a little bit. So that, that's kind of how I started. And, you know, it's amazing. You can, you can catch fish on shallow crankbaits on almost any lake uh, for the majority of the year, I would say. So it's a, uh, it's a good technique to come be familiar with because you can catch a lot of fish, you can find fish quickly, and you can catch big fish doing it too. Um, so what, you know, well, what is a crankbait? It's kind of, kind of backing up. A lot of people say, well, that might be a silly question. This is a very advanced class, advanced, you know, advanced group of uh, learners here, but I define it, this is my own, I didn't look it up or nothing. I uh, defined it as a hard plastic lipped fishing lure that vibrates, wiggles, or swims during the cast of a, uh, due to the resistance created by the water being forced over the bill or the back of a bait. And uh, as you can see, I broke it down to, I, I consider basically four categories of crankbaits. You have your lipless crankbaits, your wobblers, your, you know, which are your, your bigger, wider baits that uh, have a lot more pronounced, pronounced wobble, as you can see on there. They have, uh, that's definitely more of a power, power bait, like this, uh, this, this wobbler here. Square right, square bills are in that category. Uh, you know, your Balsa B1s, um, you know, Lucky Craft RC 1.5s, the, the new Spro Fat John is, is what I consider a, a fat wobbler. Um, and then you have your regular crank baits, which are, you know, your smaller baits. That don't have as, as big of a profile. They can be flat sided or rounded, but you know there's a big difference between these two baits. Um, in, and then you have your deep crank baits. So it's kind of four groups. And I, I'm just I'm like that. I'm a very, very organized person, so I like to kind of classify things into certain uh, categories. And that's this this right here helps me when I'm trying to choose the right line, choose the right hooks, all that kind of stuff. Choose the right rod, choose you know all that kind of stuff. And um, one of the questions I get a lot, what's, what's the difference between a shallow crankbait and a deep crankbait? What's your, well, that eight to 10 foot range is, is my difference. Um, you can, you know, if you got a bait that runs eight to 10 feet deep or shallower, that's what I consider shallow crankbait fishing because a lot of that kind of fishing is, is visual. Bash you folks, information is pouring over. If you want to learn more about every lake, how to fish shallow deep in between, skipping docks and rocks and cranking, slow wiggling, chatter smattering, you get it at Bash U. Get on Bash U TV, check it out, sign up, be a member, be part of it folks, keep learning.